Hello, it is Sunday, January 14th, 2024. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It is a Sunday crossword, which means we're going to be solving a big themed Sunday grid, the jumbo grid on Sunday. That's how it goes. And uh, with a title, a tantalizing title, <laughs> er, in other words, it makes me think we're going to be putting the letters E-R in other words somehow. I'm really interested to know what this is. <laughs> Very curious. In any case, this curiosity inspiring edition of The Daily Solve has been brought to us by Victoria Rojishka, Kathleen Quinn, Quotidiophile, and as always, the indomitable Shoalmaster. So thank you so much to the four of them. They are, of course, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, which means they support this channel, keep this whole series going for that. I'm very grateful. Thank you to them. Thank you to everybody who's a patron of the channel at any level for any length of time. It really does mean a lot to me, and it does keep this whole thing going. So thank you to those four. Thanks to all of the patrons. And if you'd like to contribute in that way, you can head over to patreon.com slash daily solve or click the link in the description field underneath the video. And there you'll find all of the bonus videos available to patrons, as well as, of course, for benefactors, the official Let's Check the Crosses mug. And uh, up on the channel, there's the most recent mini puzzle pseudo speed solve. There's the latest monthly bonus puzzle from the New York Times of a very different style than the uh, last several years of monthly bonus puzzles. So new constructor, new style, new year. We'll see if that holds. Very curious. Um, anyway, thanks again to everybody who supports the channel. Uh, you can also support the channel by subscribing on YouTube, commenting, liking the videos. Those things are all very helpful. So thanks if you've done that. And finally, there's the Daily Solve Discord chat server. You can be, become a member of that. That's free. And it's a nice, friendly chat community over there. There's a link in the description field. All right. Now let's get on to today's Sunday crossword, themed crossword entitled, Er, in other words... This was constructed, this is the second construction by John Kugelman for the New York Times, and it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So let's start solving and see how we get on with this. I'm very, I'm very curious about what the title uh, portends. Hurricanes and tornadoes. They are storms, they're weather events, they're cyclones. I don't know. They're probably not both cyclones. I don't know what defines a cyclone. <laughs> oh, is this a slightly wider grid than it is tall? Um, it's 21 wide and no, no, it's, it's, it's 21 tall. Okay. I don't know what I was thinking. Uh, maybe it's just the arrangement of the black cells that made me think that, that way to go me. I'm the best. Maybe <laughs> it could be, uh, it's always fun if you can just get these out of nowhere, but I don't know if this is actually it. V on the NYSE, right? This will be a stock symbol on the New York Stock Exchange, presumably. So it'll start with, I'm sure, relatively certain, it'll start with V, it'll be the name of a company. Visa, maybe, the credit card processing network. Uh, that's potentially in favor of I'm the best, but if I'm the best is wrong, then Visa could also be wrong. Albatross, metaphorically. So an albatross around your neck is a, is a weight around your neck. It's a metaphorical burden of some sort. Could be the onus, you know, a sort of literal burden that you bear. I'm not sure. Hypnotized, say. Hmm. Some closet organizers. I don't know. I'm starting to become less confident in I'm the best. And so I don't know if I can rely on Visa. Let's see. Hurricanes and tornadoes. Great ape, question mark. Great ape, a, uh, a similar, um, something about imitating somebody very well. Oh, I don't know. I can't think. Maybe it's a name. Maybe it's a, like, um, is there a famous mime or imitation artist or something? I'm not sure. Five Downs Pet. Ah, right. This will be Astro. This will be, because Five Down is the Jetson. I see the, um, the Jetson's boy. And I don't necessarily remember the name of the boy, but I definitely remember the dog is Astro. So what is it? L. First thought was L. L. Ron, which I was sort of thinking of L. Ron Hubbard for some reason, but no, it's not spelled that way anyway. L. Elroy, his boy Elroy, they say in the song. That's what it is. Okay. So, well, the yeah, Apple Trust could be the onus then here. Hypnotized, say. I don't know. Everything I'm thinking of is long, like in, entranced, things like this. Let's try Onus and see if it gives me anything. 
Hurricanes and tornadoes. Oh, vortexes? Yeah, they're vortexes. <laughs> I wonder, can you, you can't, surely you can't pluralize vortexes as vortices, can you? In the way that you can pluralize vertex as vertices. Well, not just can, but do. I don't know. I'm not actually sure about that. Let's look at this. Hypnotized. Oh, if you're hypnotized, you're sort of, okay, so entranced, wrapped, you're completely, um, you know, enraptured, I suppose, is, is a word that uses the same uh, same root word as wrapped here. Some closet organizers are tiered, tier, tiered organizers. I don't know. Way to go, me. I nailed it. There we go. Okay, so I was completely wrong with whatever my original guess here was. What was it? I am the best or something like that? No, not correct. Great ape, a super mimic. Is that a word? I don't know. Crossed out. No, not in this case. X'd out. Super great ape. Oh, super duper. Oh, right. Okay. Oh, oh, is this what the, this is what the er, er, in other words. We have two ers here. We have super duper, supped up. <laughs> I don't think, I don't think supped up is anything, but let's see. Great ape. So in other words, if you ape somebody, you imitate them. So a great ape would be someone who is super at duping people, a super duper. There we go. Okay. And then obviously that's, that's a phrase unto itself. That means something's really, really wonderful. Okay. So I don't a hundred percent, I don't think I see the full scope of the theme yet, but we can see we've put er into two words here. So that's something yesterday in Spanish. Ooh, I don't know. I don't know. That's annoying. Uh, annoyed at myself, by the way, not not anyone else or the puzzle. Uh, nurses, uh, if you nurse a drink, you sip a drink. So nurses sips. Ready with up. To tee something up is to ready it. And to cash in is to redeem. If you if you redeem a coupon or you redeem a, a check or something, you cash it in. Okay, to ooze is to seep out, maybe, if some liquid or something oozes, seeps out of a container. Here we have a slash, oh, per, as in, uh, so in a fractional sense. So you could say, you know, three per unit or something. You could separate those with a slash. Blank Jam record label, Def Jam is a record label. There we go. And Disney villain, who's the Grand Vizier of Agrabah. Oh, it's uh, Jafar. Oh, maybe this isn't, isn't his name spelled with an A? So this must not be seep out. Oh, seepage. Okay, so, right. So ooze can be a noun or a verb. And in this case, it's a noun. So you could say, oh, I saw some seepage. I saw some ooze, which sounds not very pleasant. But anyway, that must be right. And then this would be Jafar. Here we'd have erotic artist, question mark. Right. So I think this will be another theme answer involving two ers. So can we put er on the end, do we think? Let's look at the crosses and see. Creditors security. Um, a lien. So if you have a mortgage and you are in arrears, you're not paying it back, maybe the creditor, the security is they put a lien on your home. So they you know, could, could repossess your home and then make a mis makes a mistake. One errors. Okay. One, yes. One commits an error. Okay. So I think this does end with ER. So erotic artist. <laughs> First thing that just came to mind is junk drawer in the sense of someone who draws junk, but I don't know why that would necessarily be I don't know why junk would match with erotic. It's just that there's a J there. So, But the drawer, you know, drawer, drawer, I kind of want that to be the case. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. It could be inker, I guess. I don't know. It could be anything. Okay. Well, I don't have any good ideas. Wrinkle-faced dog could be a pug. Wow, maybe it is junk drawer. Uh, grape from France's Cote d'Or. Uh, Pinot Noir must be. There we go. Would not have been able to tell you that that was the, the region in which Pinot Noir are, are grown. But, but there we go with the P and the IR. Uh, I think it must be the case. 
Dash's partner, oh, Dine, Dine and Dash, if you, um, right, someone, someone brought me up on this recently. What is it? What was it? I, I either said, I can't remember which I said. I think I said, well, I don't know. It was something about whether dining and dashing is eating quickly and then, you know, splitting from a date or something, or whether it means to eat and then run out of the restaurant without paying. And I must have confused which it means. And now I'm not sure which is which, but I think to dine and dash is one of those two. And I don't, I don't quite remember which, but in any case, there we go. This really looks like it might be what I thought. Let's see if that holds. Ancient Romans made it from soot. Oh, ink, that would make sense. Make black ink from soot. Purchase for a golf course could be sod, maybe, for the for the, uh, the surface of the course. Nexus abbreviation, a center. Uh, Nexus could be a center of something. Let's see if that works. One of 12, biblically, yes, the disciples of Jesus. There we go. Okay, so I think this is right. Uh, interesting. So, right, what does this mean? So we have ER in two words over here, but oops, um, but just one here. Yeah, I still don't quite get, get exactly understand how the theme works. And I see another ER here. Yeah, this will be another theme theme answer. Okay, well, let's just keep going for now. Peeved. If you're peeved, you're in a pet, maybe? You're sort of in a mood. You're in a... Is there another word, three-letter word for this? I'm not, I can't think of one offhand. Author, yes, if one authors something, one pens something, maybe with uh, ink made from soil or, or soot, I should say. Peeved, I think it probably is in a pet. Here we have Indigo Girl's song with the chorus, adding up the total of a love that's true. Multiply life by the power of two. There we go. Uh, good rhyming inference there. Let me be perfectly blank, pride slogan. Let me be perfectly queer, obviously playing on the phrase, let me be perfectly clear. There we go. All right. And then somewhat could be... It's somewhat true. It's... Oh, quasi. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. Yes, there we go. So uh, it's, it's sort of, uh, you know, you could say a kind of quasi non-government organization, for instance, which is a, a term in, in UK governance, uh, you could say somewhat governmental organization, a non-governmental organization. For um, Let's try to think of phrases. For some reason, quango is the one that came to mind. Anyway, section of a syllabus. Um, a unit in a in a classroom syllabus. You could have unit one, two, three in an educational context. There we go. Blank Griffin, civil rights pioneer. Ooh. Oh, I'm not sure. Let's see. Let's look at the cross. Linger to remain. There we go. And then Anthony Hopkins won this with only 16 minutes of screen time. Right. This was, I, I, I think I've heard... You know, I think I've, I've remembered this fact from *The Silence of the Lambs* because he was so associated. Uh, his role as Hannibal Lecter, the the serial killer, was so iconic from that film. But in fact, he was in actually a relatively small percentage of the film, which is quite astonishing to have won Best Actor on that basis. Uh, but there we go. Okay, *Rocks Foo Fighters*. There we go. Dave Grohl's band. And if one sweet talked, one cooed, maybe. Um. I think that's probably probably the case. And then origin of the words cake and egg. Interesting. Norse? That would make sense. There's a, there's a lot of Norse in, influence on on English from the um Norse sort of invasions into uh into England or maybe the island of Britain more broadly for many centuries. And then leaves slack-jawed uh, if one leaves someone slack jawed, one awes, awes them. And then rapper blank B, Cardi B, must be, must be. And then if one took big steps, one strode confidently across the, the landscape. What a cracker jack, cracker jacks. Uh, a safe, maybe, if you're a safe cracker. And if and in this case, cracker jack, refer, you know, it's an adjective that means a sort of 
a standout performer in their field, you know, sort of Cracker Jack, uh, Safe Cracker in this case. Okay, Blank of, or- of Orléans, moniker for Joan of Arc, the maid of Orléans, I think is, is how she's known. And then if one does some field work, you could till your field in a, a farming sense. So tills, does some field work. And obviously you read this and you think it's going to, you know, it immediately looks like does some field work in the sense of does academic field work, you know, does, does work on location. But uh, nope, in this case, it literally means farming a field, I believe. Superlatively sudden, uh, sullen, not sudden, sullen. So the morosest person, no, doesn't quite work. But superlatively makes me think it'll end in EST. Um, because the superlative is the sort of most of a particular uh, adjective. So if you're sullen, you're morose, you're what? What else are you? You're mo- moodiest, doesn't, also doesn't fit. Uh, I'm not sure. Spot for a microphone. Okay, you could have a lapel microphone, a sort of uh, lavalier, lavalier microphone pinned to your lapel. Oh, mopiest. There we go. That's what it is. If you're sullen, you're moping around. That's that's correct. Actress Fisher of eighth grade. Oh, uh, oh I, I I think I can picture this person in my head, but I can't remember can't remember her name. I wanted to start with an I, or Alana maybe. Not sure. Let's see. Times twenty twenty three athlete of the year. Oh, I'm not sure. Gunpowder ingredient, niter. Um, pretty sure that's right. Saltpeter. And then... Worshipper of Ja informally, a Rasta, Rastafarian. There we go. So the informally is because we're contracting Rastafarian down to Rasta. Okay, so what about this? All oh, right, I'm still not sure. What about this? Looks interesting. Switch hitter. Oh, this probably also has a uh, has an ER at the end, would be my guess. Switch hitter. Something of... Oh, pro... Uh, no. I was going to say profiler, but no, that's the, the letters are in the wrong order. What about this one? Insurance giant. Well, et- Etna is frequently used as an insurance giant, although this doesn't look very good, does it? Geico? That doesn't look very good either. Hmm. Okay. What about these? Mental fogs. Maybe this Maybe this isn't the bit that ends with ER because we've seen from junk drawer that, oh, this doesn't look good either. Oh, sweet talked is wooed, not cooed. Right. Okay. There we go. Similar idea, but cooed is the actual, you know, the sort of words you might make, whereas wooing is the sort of action. But e- either one of them, I think, is is a valid answer to sweet talked, but I guessed the wrong one. So this is town. Okay. And this doesn't end with ER. So this need not either. Um, so street magician. Oh, something around town. Boy, I really don't understand how the theme works, do I? All I know is that there's an ER at least once in each of these answers, but that's it. So here we have concrete support rebar. So rebar is the, you know, sort of metal uh, reinforcements used in often in concrete. And then straws in the wind. Not sure. Muscat resident would be an Omani, a resident of Muscat, Oman. Straws in the wind. Oh, omens? Is that a phrase used to refer to omens? I didn't know that, I don't think. But, but there we go. You could say, oh, there's seems to be going this way. There, that's the straws in the wind, the omens. I don't know. I'm just guessing on that. Demure. To demure is to, uh, to kind of withdraw or to, to decline or to, um, I can't think what would be M, four letters with M. Bad thing to drop in polite company. And stockpile to amass to cash maybe? Or a stockpile could be a cash. I think that's probably right. And then replies, oh no, it isn't, because replies of disgust, we're going to want it to end with S, I would think. Uggs? That doesn't really fit in two letters. Ews does, E-W. Um, 
street. Oh, wander around t- around town. Right. Someone who, you know, waves their wand around town. They're a wander. I don't get what is going on with this theme. Er, in other words. I'm so curious to see. Sorry, I, I really apologize if I'm missing an obvious way to interpret what, what the sort of rule to this theme is, other than there's an ER in these phrases, because uh, I'm sure it's more than that. Um, okay. Pass in a casino. No hit, maybe, in, in blackjack. Is that a phrase, no hit? I think it sounds like it might be. Oh, it's a stockpile is a store, and that could be used as a verb or a noun. I'm going to store things. I'm going to stockpile them in my store, in my stockpile. There we go. Quadcopter, e.g. a drone. Um, drones often have four uh, propeller, little copter propeller things. Ba- uh, rotor, uh, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Bad thing to drop in polite company. I don't know what this is. Yeah, sorry. Stooly. Stooly is a is a patsy someone who or is it is a stooly a, a patsy someone on which you pin a crime or is a stooly someone who sing who tells the police, you know, like a stool pigeon. Uh, can't, a, a rat rat fink. I don't think that's the answer. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. One hitting the space bar, question mark. Not sure. Okay, I'm a little bit, a little bit stuck at the moment. Police accountability tool. Oh, a body cam? There we go. There we go. That's helpful because that puts this. Although, what on earth is this? No hit must be wrong. Oops. Bad thing. To, oh, an, an F-bomb or something like that? A bit of profanity? So pass in a casino, no, oh, no bid, no bid. There we go. There we go. That sounds better. I didn't think no hit was what you said in, in, uh, in blackjack, but I just, I, I just couldn't think of anything better, but there we go. No bid sounds right. Stooly, a, oh, maybe it is, maybe it is rat fink. Oh, that's funny. I was sort of saying that almost as a joke, but I think it might be right. Although no, this doesn't look right. Does it? One hitting the space bar. I don't think that's right. Uh, never mind. Uh, I guess no bid could still be wrong, though. I, it's not as though I was confident about that. It just sounded better than than whatever I had before there. No hit. Farmers. Uh, I'm going to delete that. Something tenders. You tend to farm or feeders, maybe, or... I don't know. Demure. Author Gaiman. Neil Gaiman. He wrote the Sandman comics see here i oh right okay so uh, i haven't had very many of these recently i don't think but often the exclamation point indicates it's a category of clue in which we're describing the answer or as or saying something about it or referring to it rather than defining it or being synonymous with it so see here in other words here is literally where you do your seeing where you see uh your eye Okay, so to demure is to, I don't know why I can't see this. It's ridiculous. Oh, oh, if you are, oh, no, I think I've been thinking of demure without an E as a verb, whereas this is a demure person could be a sort of meek person or retiring or shy person uh, as, as a character trait. Okay, I think that's what that's what we're looking for. So a meek person. And then a switch hitter is trick uh, uh, something. Oh, tricker of light. Is it a trick of the light? Tricker of what does that mean? Tricker of light. I don't quite get it. Uh, trick of lighter. Uh, yeah, I don't understand how this works. Switch hitter. What does that mean? I don't know. Actress Fisher of eighth grade. Insurance child. Oh, could be Geico. 
mental fogs, hazes, lock, a tress of hair. There we go. I was trying to think of this word for a crossword. Oh, it was for one of the mini crosswords in my most recent uh, Patreon video. Okay, what might be drawn with a C in cartoons? Uh, you could draw an ear with the letter C, I suppose. Appropriate. Oh, no, it's appro to appropriate someone's possessions would be to seize them. There we go. And then top pair uh, aces. So a pair of aces would be uh, would be the best pair of cards in poker or something. Trash is uh, to toss something would be to trash it, to, to rubbish it, to get rid of it. Emulate Jack Spratt. Jack Spratt would eat no, or could eat no fat. His wife could eat no lean. Goes the, goes the nursery rhyme. There we go. Target of YA fiction. So young adult fiction is for is for uh, is targeted at teens. There we go. Parkway or expressway abbreviation is a route, and because this is saying only a parkway or an expressway, uh, it doesn't need to be pluralized. In fact, it needs not be um, because, uh, well, it needs to not be because we're only referring to one of the two. Animal tranquilizer, right. Well, my first thought would be that it would end with dart, but it doesn't because I'm pretty sure Mobius is correct. Oh, is this Messi as in Lionel Messi, the footballer? Uh, so I just remembered that this was an athlete and I hadn't filled it in, but it looks like that's probably the answer. So, oh, Elsie Fisher. Okay, there we go. That must, that sounds right to me. Elsie, actress Elsie Fisher of eighth grade. Yeah. Okay, all together. The entire group, the group all together, maybe? Not sure that's right. Animal tranquilizer. I don't know. Not sure yet. And and it's interesting that there's a question mark there. So what's, oh no, but there's a question mark because it's a theme clue, clue in general. So it will be probably some sort of pun, but I don't, yeah, but I, don't, I still don't have a handle on this theme particularly. Base symbol. Right. Is there some way Tricker of Light? Could be, I thought Tricker of Light was going to be right because Trick of the Light is a is a phrase, but base symbol would be the F clef, I think, if it's if it's referring to a symbol on um, a musical staff, you have the base symbol. You know, it's the it's the symbol that's used in the two in the bottom of the two clefs that are used in, for instance, piano music. Um, and bass clef would be used in other instruments as well. But most, I think, probably most classically seen in piano notation, most frequently anyway. Um, oh, flicker flicker of light. Oh, right, of course. So why? What is that? A switch hitter? What is that? Oh. Someone who literally hits a switch to make the light go on. They flick the switch. Ah, okay. That was much more straightforward than I was making it. But I still don't quite get the full extent of the theme. The tiniest bit could be the least of something. Oh, this looks like Acela. Yes, the fastest train in the U.S., uh, the Acela. I mean, it's not all that high speed compared to many trains worldwide, but I suppose it is the fastest train in the U.S., so there we go. Uh, this is the Amtrak service that serves the... Uh, the northeastern corridor of the U.S., or it's, it's one of the train services on that route. Law enforcer in the Harry Potter universe. Ooh, no idea. Uh, plans of study. Not sure. Warm touch. Warm touch. A oh, a caress. A car warm in, the, in, a, in an emotional sense rather than literal. Old SeaWorld mascot. Uh, Sh oh, Shamu, right. Did they retire Shamu, I think, due to animal cruelty concerns? And then, hence the old. And then communication with one's hands for short. Oh, ASL, American Sign Language. So quite literally communicating with your hands. And then all together, oh, it's not entire. So it's, uh, oh, on, blo on block. There we go. So as a, as a group, as one. There we go. And then here the sun's, oh, something of the beast, animal tranquilizer. Oh, number of the beast. Number of the beast. I guess the theme is just that we're taking, I see, I th sorry, I think I was overcomplicating it. Yeah, sorry. It's just that we're taking standard phrases, but we're changing the sort of semantic meaning of the, of the ER in the sense that, you know, number does not refer to 
something that numbs. It, it's, you know, it's a phrase, it's a word unto itself. A number is a, is a sort of discrete concept. But then in this er, in other words, we're kind of, we're taking the er and we're making a different word out of it in terms of its meaning. We're saying this is something that numbs a beast. It is a numb er of the beast. And then similarly here, super and duper, those are words effectively unto themselves. They're not someone who sups and someone who dups, but now we're turning it into super duper and then junk drawer. I mean, we're someone who dupes, I guess. Uh, here, a junk drawer, turning it into someone who draws, a junk drawer. Okay, there we go. Flicker of, okay. So I don't know why I was making that so complicated. I'm sorry. There are going to be a lot of comments about this from the first, first half hour of this video of people explaining to me why I do not see what this is. But anyway, that's what it is. So, all right. I don't know this. What about this? To give a darn is to care. Longtime actor on Law & Order SVU. I do not know. Oh, actually, I think I maybe do. I've never seen Law & Order SVU, but I know that Ice-T is in one of those. So it must be this one. All right. Um, panhandle. Uh, could handle could mean a, a, a name in the sense of someone's kind of username or something. It just it, because there's a question mark, it's a pun. I'm trying to think what the pun would be. Or could be pan meaning a negative review. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Word with straw or swing. Straw pole or swing pole now. Big Apple figure. So this is referring to New York, city of New York, presumably, um, but I'm not sure. Boy Wonder of comic. Oh, Robin, Batman's sidekick is, I think, the Boy Wonder. So straight, if you're standing straight up, you're standing erect. There we go. Like the open sea, the open sea is... Don't know. If you're not fooled by someone, you're on to them. You're on to their tricks. Some carry a spare one in a boot, spare tire, and we're going to spell it T-Y-R-E because a boot, meaning the, the trunk of a car, um, this is the you know British English word for that concept. And so we're going to spell tire in the British English manner with a Y rather than an I. And so, you know, when you see, when a clue is, is, is alluding to a location or some phrase in another dialect or language, the answer generally will also be in that dialect or language as it is here. Okay. So what is the big apple figure? I don't know. I don't know. Just keep going. Smartphone platform. Well, in three letters, probably iOS, which is the software platform used by Apple smartphones. And then a big bit of decoration at a beach house. Oops. Uh, I don't know. A shell or a, or, or what? what? What else would there be? Uh, I can't think. I don't know. Not just, to not just think would be to know. If you don't just think something, you know it, probably. Oh, oh, it's not Big Apple referring to New York. Ah, very clever. So we were mis misled by the, by the B in Big Apple being capitalized, but it's only capitalized because it's the first letter of the clue, not because we're referring to the Big Apple. So it's a big figure in Apple, the company, who is Tim Cook, the CEO. Okay, so what's the bit of decoration at a beach house? I don't know. Oh, right. And here is a compound theme clue with 117 across the Grim Reaper. Uh, ender of, no, uh, I don't know. Well, let's just keep going through the, these downs here. Okay. Zodiac symbol. Ooh, is the, is the bear a zodiac symbol? I don't. It's really ridiculous that I have not learned these yet, given how often they come up in the crossword. What are the zodiac symbols? What would start with B? I don't know. Sicily or Sardinia. Either one of those would be an isle. And again, because we're only referring to Sicily or Sardinia, it's a singular uh, isle. Ending with late or great. Uh, well, there was uh, late. Oh, late night or great night. No. Late night spelled N-I-T-E. I could see that used in a sort of commercial sense, but I don't know why great would be. Oh, lateness or greatness. There we go. Okay, that's that was more straightforward than I was making it. The Grim Reaper, something, oh, off, offer you can't refuse? An offer you can't refuse. Ah, that's very clever. There we go. So 
um, the phrase, an offer you can't refuse, of course, um, made famous by the film The Godfather. Um, but in this case, we're using offer to mean someone who literally offs you, who takes your life and you can't refuse it because the Grim Reaper is the personification of the inevitability of death. So there we have it. Good. All right. That's a good, uh, good ender. A good way to end the theme. Uh, so what is the, oh, an oar, right. Okay. You could have a, a, a an oar from a rowboat as a decoration in a beach house. Okay. Well, there we go. They might be flagged as potential spam robo calls maybe. Yeah. Oh, the bull is a zodiac symbol. Of course. Why didn't I think of that immediately? If one cuts something down to size, like a piece of wood, for instance, one whittles it down. So here we have texters truthfully. I didn't look at this before. So TBH, to be honest, you could say truthfully, this is how I feel. And French chess piece could be roi for the king is, of course, a chess piece. And I think we've looked at all the all the clues down there. So, all right. Like the open sea. Right. I still don't know what that one is. Blank out. Far out, you could say. That's, uh, it's a, you know, it's amazing. It's incredible. The dark side of the moon studio. Is this, does this mean the recording studio where Pink Floyd recorded the dark side of the moon? Or does it mean... EMI. Was that the record label? I'm actually not sure. Uh, if I had to guess, it would be this, but let's look at the crosses and see. Live content creators, those streamers, people who stream video live. And then, which I've done a couple of times on this channel, but not often. Seasonal charity event could be um, a something ride. Fire up? No, it isn't. It's something. Oh, it's something drive. So to fire someone, to get people fired up, to rev them up. There we go. And then, oh, toy drive maybe. So around Christmas time, you might do a toy drive. I think that must be right. And then, oh, the open sea is vast. Of course, it is sort of terrifyingly vast. And then, word with straw or swing. Oh, oh, straw, straw vote or swing vote. Is a straw vote like a straw poll? Okay. So I was on the right track, strangely, with poll in that a, a vote is a kind of poll. I think this must be right. And then complain. if one complained, one beefed, you beefed about something, you complained about it. And then panhandle, still not sure about that. Not open to appeal as a court decision. Uh, uh, preemptory? Not sure that's right. Let's look at the crosses. Hail to Caesar, Ave. So a kind of greeting you call out. And Caesar, again, similarly to the to the boot thing here, Caesar just indicates that we're going to be using a word in Latin. And there we have it. Valentine candy message. I love you. Right. On the little um, candy hearts, they, they spell this in this contracted way. Uh, so I think probably we're putting L-U-V-U. Plans of study are curricula. Oh, no, this isn't preemptory. Peremptory. Peremptory. There we go. So that's what I was thinking of, presumably. And then plans of study would be curricula, um, uh, you know, in, in an academic sense, plans of study, and then praline ingredient, uh, pecan, right, so pralines like the confections, the chocolates. Okay, Zeno of blank, paradoxical thinker, right, is it Zeno of Elia? This is Zeno who formulated um, paradoxes such as, um, I think Zeno actually has a few paradoxes, but uh, Zeno's paradox. I think the one that I am most familiar with from Zeno is, I believe Zeno's paradox, or the one I'm thinking of is, you know, imagine you have to walk from here to the other side of the room. Well, first you have to walk half the distance to the other end of the room. That's a given. And then you've got to walk half of the distance left. And then you've got to walk half the distance of that. And if you keep doing that, you will never actually reach the other end of the room. You will just sort of each time you'll walk a shorter and shorter distance and, and eventually you'll sort of, you'll never stop walking, but you'll be walking a sort of infinitely small amount by the end and not reaching your destination. Um, and of course, obviously we can prove that that, you can simply walk to the other, 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 other end of the room and disprove that paradox, but as a thought experiment, it is an interesting uh, thing to consider. All right, supply as elevator music to pipe in the music. ER shout could be clear. Oh, right. If you're um, uh, using the uh, defibrillator and trying to resuscitate someone in that way, shout clear. Okay. Unplanned preview, perhaps. 
I don't know. A, a leak. If something is leaked, it's an unplanned preview of something that has not yet been announced. This is Ratfink. Stooley. What did I, why did I think it wasn't? One hitting the space bar. Oh, it's no bet, not no bid. Ah, ah okay. Ah, unnecessary confusion there. So one hitting the space bar. An alien? If you're like the Moss Eisley Cantina in Star Wars or something, you're literally going to a bar in space. I think that must be the case. Okay, there we go. That's a clever clue. Absolutely wasn't on the right track with that one. Uh, if something lists, it leans. So in the sense of, you know, the leaning tower of Pisa, it's listing to one side. Okay, farmers are uh, something tenders, chicken tenders. There we go. There we go. So once again, right, a chicken tender in the common idiomatic phrase refers to a particular part of a chicken breast fillet, I think. Um, but in this case, we're referring to someone who literally tends, who keeps, who looks to the chickens. All right, here we have George who wrote the 1994 autobiography to the stars. Uh, George Takei, the, um, who portrayed Sulu, right, from the original Star Trek series. And then toast with a raised stein. Um, is it? Uh, oops. Uh, prost. So you say that to, to toast. You're saying cheers, essentially. And then meat jelly aspic. So that's the kind of gelatinous um, substance that, uh, you know, you might have. I guess it's used for both sweet and savory dishes, um, depending on the context. But there we go. Reply of disgust, ick, maybe? Butler on the Adams family. Lurch, that's right. I, if, if, you'd, <laughs> if you'd mentioned Lurch to me as a character, I would have remembered it was from either the Adams family or the Munsters, but I wouldn't have remembered which. And uh, fortunately, I didn't need to. Japanese mushroom, enoki is a, is a variety of Japanese mushroom. And then Guinness of the Lady Killers, Alec Guinness. Oh, this is a great, this is a really funny ridiculous movie. It's really worth watching if, you, if you've not seen it. Uh, Alec Guinness and the Lady Killers. Uh, that was one of his Ealing, Ealing Studio comedies. He had this great run of, of, uh, of comedy films made at Ealing Studios in, in, uh, in West London. Uh, made as a putt. Uh, sunk. If you sunk a putt, you, you, ma you made the putt. You sunk it. And then some closet organizers, oh, tie racks, nothing to do with tiered anything. I was really uh, mis misled by myself on that one. And then yesterday in Spanish must be ayer. All right. And that sounds very similar to yesterday in French, ayer. So there we go. All right. Oh, it's not done. Oh, I, oops, oops. I never filled in this. I didn't realize there was a, a, a cell unfilled. Panhandle is panhandle. And law and oh, I have no idea what either of these is. Aurora, like Aurora, Panhandle. I mean, it looks like it's Peter, but what does that mean? I'm just going to try it. It's right. What does that mean? Panhandle, Peter. Oh, I can't believe I'm just not seeing what this is. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> That's completely ridiculous that I can't see what this is. And then, I mean, the Harry Potter thing, I don't know the, the phrase, but that's fine. It's, it's a proper noun, so it doesn't need to mean anything specifically or or or. But this is really bothering me that I can't that I don't know what this is. Panhandle. Peter. Pan. Oh, Peter Pan. Ah, sorry. Oh, that took me ages. Ah, oh, my goodness. Okay. So it was handle as in a name. Um, I just couldn't think of what Pan was referring to. It's Peter Pan from the, from the story. Ah, well, there we have it. Okay, great. And that was the Sunday puzzle. And it took me quite a long time to understand what was going on with this er. I was just thinking, well, it's some sort of, I, because I was thinking the difference between er and then not having er on the words. And I was thinking, well, 
supped up doesn't mean anything. Junk draw doesn't really mean anything. But no, it's not that. It's that the it's that word. The er is sort of, you know, it's 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 we're we're using it as a different part of speech or sort of a different. We're implying something different semantically in terms of you know from its meaning. Uh, so there we go. So we've got our great ape, our super duper, our erotic artist, our junk drawer. Another, I mean, I guess what it really is 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 we're taking idiomatic phrases. Uh, that already exist with ER in them, and then we're recontextualizing them, recontextualizing them in a punny sort of way. In some cases, to make them more literal. So, someone who literally is super at duping people, or someone who is who draws junk, you could say, uh, in this context, um, a wander around town, someone who's a street magician with a wand. Uh, what else? A uh, chicken tenders, the farmers who tend chickens. A switch hitter, someone who, a flicker of light who flicks light switches. The number of the beast who tranquilizes animals, who numbs the beasts. And then finally, our very fitting conclusion to the theme. Uh, the Grim Reaper is an offer you can't refuse. Someone who offs you despite how you may feel about it. And uh, and there we have it. Very nice. And of course, it's a Sunday puzzle, so it took a while. <laughs> Over 40 minutes. That's just how it goes on Sunday. It's a big old grid, isn't it? And uh, and and that's that. That was the Sunday crossword. That was the Sunday video. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I did, especially especially after I finally understood the theme. Um, hopefully you weren't yelling at me through the screen too too vociferously. But but there we go. That was the puzzle. Back tomorrow with the Monday edition, a much quicker, smaller but still themed edition of the crossword. Uh, join me for that. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Sunday. Take care. Mm-hmm.